Hey everybody, welcome to lab four. Uh, this week we're actually going to be putting the finishing touches on your distance refraction sequence. Um, we're also then going to review all the steps that came before uh, this and put it together for you. Um, this week we are picking up where we left off. We finished last week with the Jackson cross cylinder or the subjective uh, cylinder refinement. Uh, this week we're going to actually do the binocular balance or distance equalization is what it's called, and finally your binocular subjective to best visual acuity, or what's called the, the actual refraction or prescription. Uh, there's a few steps between JCC though and the BSBVA. Fortunately, there's steps you've already learned. Um, the first step that we're gonna take after our JCC is 2040 blurring our patient again, so that we can uh, do one additional monocular subjective spherical refinement. So. We're coming into this. Uh, we just completed Phoebe's JCC, and she had indicated that she did not want any cylinder at all when we did her JCC last time. And so we're coming in and we're getting ready to do our next 2040 blur, the one that comes right after JCC. So I have my 2040 chart up there. Phoebe, tell me when those letters out there get so blurry you couldn't read any of them at all. Here. Okay. And I'm gonna give you just a second. Any of them there at all? No. Okay, I'm gonna go two past. Tell me, Phoebe, when you could read one or two of them now. Here. Great, I'm gonna switch eyes on her. Okay, same thing as before. Tell me when those letters get so blurry you couldn't read any of them at all. Here. I'm going to go two past. Can you read any there? No. Tell me when you could read one or two. Here. Great. Okay, we've got our 2040 blurred in each eye, so I'm going to go ahead and occlude the left eye again. At this point in time, we're going to do our next spherical refinement. Um, the This time, instead of doing bichrome or MSBVA, the second time you do a spherical subjective refinement, it's going to be your MSBVA. So for the purposes of our class, Optometry 645, uh, the first time you do a subjective spherical refinement test, it will be your bichrome. The second time you do it, it will indeed be the MSBVA. So here we have her 2040 blurred, 20 line of letters back up on the eye chart again, and we'll proceed just as we did the first time we taught you to do MSBVA. Phoebe, please tell me when you can make out one or two letters on that eye chart. Here we go. Here. Okay. And are those letters more clear here with one? Or here with two? One. And one up here? Or two? One. And one up here? Or two? One. Great. And I'm going to switch eyes on her. Same thing as before. Tell me when you can make out a couple of those letters. Here. And are they better with one or two? One. And two or three? Two. And three or four? Three. And are they smaller and darker here or just more clear? They're clear. Great. Super. So now we have our MSBVA for Phoebe. And we would go ahead and check the visual acuities just to make sure that they indeed um, are uh, at least 2020 or better. And then at this point in time, what we're going to do is we'll plug in our 2040 blur that we just acquired on her, or we'll repeat the 2040 blur as the preset to our distance equalization. Now, this can be somewhat confusing for students because we have so many 2040 blurs and we are subjectively refining the spherical um, power of the prescription a couple of times. I get this question often and, and this step in particular can be perplexing. The reason that we have you do this after your JCC, so you've done your JCC, we 2040 blur, we do another MSBVA, the reason that we do that is now we have the absolute best cylinder power in place. We want to make sure that we have not, with that cylinder power, over minus our patient and not perhaps maintain the best spherical component monocularly. So the reason we do that is we want to make sure we have the best 
cylinder power, and then we also have the best spherical power monocularly. That's why we do this step. Now when we 2040 blur our patient, it's totally in preparation for the binocular subjective to best visual acuity. Okay, so now we move into the binocular aspects. So we'll 2040 blur our patient again. Uh, tell me when those letters are so blurry, Phoebe, you couldn't see any of them at all on that 2040 line. Here we go. Here. Good. And I'm going to go two pass. Tell me when you could read a couple. Mm -hmm. Good. Same thing over here. Here. And I'm going to go two pass. Tell me when you could read a couple. Here. Good. So our 2040 blur is a plus 175 and a plus 150. Now we're actually ready to begin what we call our binocular balance or our distance equalization. This particular test, um, it, it can be somewhat confusing if you're not paying attention to the steps. We have a 2040 line of letters isolated out there. Um, the setup, it's total, it's normal room illumination. We'll bring our prism around. And it's going to be three base up. Base down. Three base down, three base up. So you should have a total of six prism diopters. Now, whether you put the three base down in front of your right eye or your left eye, it's quite honestly, it, it doesn't matter. The key is that you've dissociated the line of letters into two 2040 line of letters, and that you, when you're asking your patient the questions, you're tracking along their responses. I've given Phoebe three base down in front of her right eye and three base up in front of her left eye. So as Phoebe looks over there, she should report one is on the top, one is on the bottom. Phoebe, as you look at the eye chart over there, do you see two lines of letters? Um, yeah. You're looking over there. I'm going to cover Phoebe's right eye and just ask her which one disappears. Now, when I do this, Phoebe, which line of letters goes away, top or bottom? The top. Great. And then when I do this, which one goes away, top or bottom? The bottom. Great. Now, first step is we've 2040 blurred our patient. We're trying to equate. Or, or cause the accommodation or accommodative effort between the two eyes to be equal. And so my question to Phoebe is, I'm going to ask her which of those two lines of letters is more clear. As you're looking over there, Phoebe, which line of letters is slightly more clear, the top or the bottom? The uh, top. Great. Phoebe has told me that the top is more clear, so the first step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a quarter of a diopter of plus to the top eye. So quarter diopter plus goes in place and I repeat the question. Phoebe, which line of letters is more clear here, top or bottom? They're about equal. They're about equal. So I've heard top, I've heard equal, but I haven't heard Phoebe say the bottom yet. Okay. So I added plus here, that made them about equal. I still need to hear that the bottom is better at some point in time. So now I'm going to add a quarter of a diopter of minus to the bottom eye. When I do this, Phoebe, which side is slightly more clear, the top or the bottom? The bottom. Now we've heard top, equal, and bottom. With that, I can take the quarter of a diopter of minus back out. This puts us back at the equal response that we had from our patient. We can take the prisms out of the way and your binocular balance is done. Okay? So you need to hear the patient say the top is better at one time, the bottom is better at one time, and ideally you will hear at least an equal in there. If you don't hear an equal, you have alternative endpoints. If you hear top and you make one lens change and the patient goes bottom, then you are in a position where you're going to have to have the patient tell you which lens option makes the, the letters more clear. I'm going to have Phoebe walk through that with us now and we're going to mimic that. So I'm setting up my, my distance equalization again and this time Phoebe is going to go, she's going to reverse her responses. There won't be an equal. She's going to tell me that the top is better on one and then I'll make a change and then the bottom is better on one and you'll see what we need to do to get that end point correct for her. 
So Phoebe's you're looking over there, which uh, letters are more clear, top or bottom? The top. Okay. Top is more clear, so again, always add plus to the clear image first, so I'm adding plus to the top eye. And how about now, Phoebe, which is more clear, top or bottom? The bottom. So now Phoebe is reversed. There's no equal. It's top and now bottom. So I all I did to elicit that reversal is I added a quarter diopter plus over here. So now what I need to ask Phoebe is, Phoebe, I'm going to give you a choice, and I want you to tell me which choice makes the lines of letters most equal in blurriness. And I'm going to remove the quarter of a diopter plus I just put in there. So are they more equal here with number one, or are they more equal here with number two? Number one. Okay. This would then be your binocular balance for this patient who did not give you an, an equal response as you were going through your lens changes. Okay? That's the most common thing that you'll see is a patient who reverses without an equal in the middle, and this is how you would handle that. Is the lens change that you made that elicited the reversal, you're going to give them a forced choice and ask them to tell you which makes them most equal when you make that one change. Now, we've got Phoebe balanced. This will roll us right into our BSBBA. Okay, so we've 2040 blurred our patient. We've binocularly balanced our patient. Now we need to give them their no kidding best subjective prescription binocularly. So we're going to put the 2020 line of letters up there. There's a couple of ways to do it. You could put the 2025 through the 2015 line of letters up there, or you can put an isolated line of 2020 up there. Either way is fine. Both eyes are open on this, full room illumination. You're having the patient look over there, and as soon as you take those prism out of the way, and they look at that eye chart, and I ask Phoebe, can you make out any of those letters at all? No. Her answer should be no. If your patient, as soon as you take these prisms out of the way, remember, your patient's 2040 blurred. If you take these prisms out of the way, and you give them a 2020 line of letters, and they can read more than half of that, they were not adequately 2040 blurred. You'll need to go back, repeat the 2040 blur, repeat the DE, come back into this. Okay. Word of caution, your patients who are latent hyperopes, your patients who are latent hyperopes, they necessitate you going extremely slowly on your D on your binoc sorry, on your 2040 blur. The 2040 blur, if you go too fast, your latent hyperopes aren't going to be given a chance to relax their accommodation. And then when you get to the BSBVA, they're going to see the 2020 line of letters just like that as soon as you take the prism out. So with latent hyperopes, go super slow on that, by, on that uh, uh, 2040 blur. So as Phoebe's looking over there, she can't see any of the letters at all. I want you to tell me the first time you can read one or two letters on that line of letters. We're changing the lenses binocularly now. Right here. Great. Same as with the MSBVA now. We give her a new choice, number one or number two. Number one. And number one or number two. One. And number one or number two. One. Now, does this make them smaller and darker or just more clear? Clear. Excellent. So here we've finished our BSBVA, we finished our binocular subjective to best visual acuity. You check visual acuity's OD, OS, and OU. You want them to go as far down on that eye chart as they can. So don't stop at 2020. If they get 2015, give them the 2010 as well. This gets you all the way through that point where you're ready to prescribe for that patient. However, this may not be your final prescription because based on the forometric testing, your phorias, vergences, and accommodation, you may need to alter that. We'll get into that as we get into our near point sequence um, in the next labs. Okay.